Hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to be making more drinks from our requests in the comments. Uh, username Sammy said, Paul would like to hallucinate and request a cocktail with absinthe. Well, let's not keep you waiting any longer and let's get to it. Hey everyone, I'm Caribbean Andy. I have 20 years experience working in bars and I'm bringing that back to my bungalow so we can make cocktails together. Grab your Hawaiian shirt and mixington and Let's get started. Uh, we do have some absinthe, and according to the label, it does contain wormwood. Uh, this is a souvenir bottle that I stole from somebody else. The only problem is absinthe doesn't actually make you hallucinate. There is, of course, lots of evidence uh, for a very long time pointing to hallucinations associated with uh, people who were famously drinking absinthe, but uh, the truth is it's really high in alcohol content, and a lot of the symptoms going along with alcohol withdrawal were really mistaken for hallucinations caused by the drink. The first cocktail we're going to make is one of the oldest cocktails around. It's a Sazerac. It dates back to the 1830s. Uh, it's today considered to be the official cocktail of New Orleans, uh, and it's basically uh, like a riff on an old-fashioned. For a long time, people thought that the original recipe for a Sazerac uh, was from the 1850s and used French brandy, but uh, turns out that's not true either. Um, if you if you do want to use brandy in your Sazeracs, go right ahead. Any brown liquid is probably going to taste good if you prepare it correctly. We're going to start off uh, in the traditional method with a sugar cube. When you do sugar cubes and drinks, you do typically add a little bit of water as well. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, hey, Kirby and Andy, if I'm putting sugar and water in there, why not just use simple syrup? Well, the truth of the matter is, you can just use simple syrup. That's okay. We're going to use Peychaud's bitters today. Uh, Peychaud's bitters were created in New Orleans, and like Angostura, they're gentian root based mint and anise are some of the predominant flavors that are going to differentiate Peychaud's bitters from Angostura. I also get uh, mild notes of Dynatap. We're going to use a lot of these, and what I like to do is do 10 dashes of the Peychaud's and get the sugar cube nice and saturated. I'm not counting. I apparently can't count and talk at the same time. We'll say that's about 10. I can't wait to watch the video and find out. Then we're gonna do five dashes of Angostura bitters. From here, you could add a little splash of water in, but I like to take my muffler and I like to crush it up and do my best to dissolve the sugar cube as much as I can just with the bitters as the only liquid. Also, this whole time, I should have been chilling my glass. Bartending is a lot harder when you don't have any time constraints. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our rye whiskey. Two. So two and a half. Why the heck not? And a half ounces of that. Fill that with ice. About 30 seconds. Discard your ice from the glass. Absinthe is a really strong ingredient, both in alcohol content and the potency of its flavor. So we're just gonna rinse the glass with it. Uh, and you could do that by just pouring a little bit in, rolling it around and discarding the excess. Or you could use one of these little bottles. Then go ahead and strain it right into the glass. You're gonna strain it, you're not gonna put it on the rocks. This is known as down, as opposed to up in a rocks glass with no ice. And then lastly, uh, there is a garnish for this drink. A lemon peel is the traditional garnish, uh, often a uh, flame lemon peel. And our match, dry it out a little bit on the back. All right, and then once you flame your peel, you can rub it around the outside. That way everyone's hand smells like flame lemon too. And they have a nice memory of the cocktail that you made for them. And then a lot of people will set it on top or maybe even put it in the drink. Throw it away. I'm gonna hold this way. The other thing about all of this is that uh, at the time in Paris, 
Syphilis was very common, so if you want to hallucinate, all you have to do is uh, go through alcohol withdrawal and get syphilis. That could be fun too. Anyway, uh, so maybe you don't want to drink a glass of rye with absinthe and bitters in it. Maybe that's a little too much for you. Uh, maybe it's the next day and you're a little bit hungover and you want a little bit of absinthe. You want some of that anise fennel flavor, but uh, you want something refreshing. Uh, that's where our next cocktail comes in. We're gonna make a Corpse Survivor number two. And a Corpse Survivor, uh, the Corpse Survivor family of cocktails numbered one through infinity. Uh, the idea being that they are all sort of uh, hangover cures, you know, they're reviving corpses. The original is a cognac based drink, but uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, at the uh, sort of height of the classic cocktail revival and the absolute height of bartenders being pretentious, uh, the Corpse Reviver number two was decidedly the one that was going to be brought back from the dead. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's delicious. Uh, it's a really great drink and so easy and honestly, very good on a hot summer day. Uh, this is going to be on a coupe, so we're going to remember to chill our glass immediately. Uh, and the other great thing about this cocktail is the recipe is easy to remember because it's all equal parts. Uh, so we're going to do three quarter ounces of gin, Heyman's Old Tom, because that's the only gin I have, and I forgot to buy some. Uh, this recipe, by the way, the Corpse Survivor number two, comes from the Savoy Hotel in London, which is where, uh, you know, a lot of you might even have the Savoy cocktail book on your coffee table, but uh, a lot of classic cocktails come from that bar. Uh, we're using Lillet Blanc. Uh, Kina Lillet is the original ingredient in this cocktail and a lot of uh, uh, older Prohibition era classic cocktails. Uh, that's not made anymore. Lillet is a little bit sweeter. It's also delicious. Uh, Coqui Americano is often used as a substitute, but you can't necessarily buy that anywhere. Um, uh, I have some, actually. Maybe I should use that. Heck, maybe we should make two. All right, well, let's just, we'll see how this goes. So our gin's in there. Uh, and then let's do our little A. Three quarters of an ounce. I really like having a around the house. It's great. Uh, you can use it the same way you'd make an Aperol spritz, make a little spritz. Throw an olive in there, bring out some of the salinity. Uh, drink this on the rocks. Nice low ABV uh, option, but you know, enough ABV. And three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Uh, three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau or any orange liqueur. You, I mean, if you want to buy a bottle of Decaper Triple Sec, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, Combier is actually the original orange liqueur. That would be a great choice here. Uh, Cointreau is uh, very expensive, but it is also, uh, it's 80 proof. Uh, so, you know, do it up. And then we'll go ahead and shake it. Discard our ice, just like with the Sazerac. Old mist of absinthe. And double strain. Cheers. Wow. I just turned the air conditioning off when I do these videos. Now let me tell you. I wouldn't need air conditioning if I could just drink this all day. Wow, it's so funny. I make these things, like I've made hundreds of these, but I don't know if I've ever actually drank one. Oh, what a splendid time. This is really great, like, if you like lemon drop martinis, stop drinking those and drink this instead. And honestly, just for fun, let's try one with the, uh, with the Coqui Americano, just to compare them.
I like the Lily one better. Sorry if everyone feels differently. I'm gonna drink that one. I'm gonna take a picture of this one and pretend it's the real one. Thank you all again for tuning in. Uh, please do make sure you're subscribed. You can actually hit that picture of me right there. That'll subscribe you to my channel and you can stay up to date with all of the cocktails that I'm making every week. And please do also, if you enjoyed the video today, hit the thumbs up button down below. Uh, that helps me in getting the video recommended to more people on YouTube. Thanks again. Bye.